Um, I am Robert Waldinger. I am a psychiatrist. I'm a professor at Harvard Med School, and I run the longest study of adult life that's ever been done. It's called the Harvard Study of Adult Development. It began in 1938 with 724 young men. Some of them were Harvard College undergraduates, and some of them were young men from Boston's poorest and most troubled families in 1938. Eventually, we included their spouses and we included their children. So now we've studied almost 3,000 people, and the study is in its 86th year. And the study was meant to be a study of how people uh, develop as they go from adolescence into adulthood. Um, that includes physical health, mental health, relationships, their work lives. And what we did was we started out with old-fashioned methods, questionnaires and interviews, um, medical exams, and eventually we added things like DNA and uh, putting them in scanners and scanning their brains, all kinds of modern methods, all of them trying to give us a picture of what allows people to thrive as they go through life. And what's unusual about this study is that it, it has lasted for so long. There were many studies that began as longitudinal studies, but they would end after five, seven, ten years because too many people drop out. And when too many people drop out, you don't know how the people who stay in your study differ from the people who dropped out. We've only had 22% of people drop out in 85 years, and that's almost unheard of. And what we've done is to keep them engaged by sending them birthday cards and thank you notes when they provide us with information. And if they need doctors, we give them referrals to doctors. We do all kinds of things to help them know that they're part of a community and that they're giving a gift to science. And we recently wrote a book about this. It's the 11th book. There have been hundreds of scientific articles, and, and this 11th book is called The Good Life, Lessons from the World's Longest Scientific Study of Happiness. And the book is about the science of relationships. What we found in our study is that the people who were the happiest, but also who stayed the healthiest and lived the longest, those people were the people who had the best connections with others, who were more connected to others, who had warmer relationships with other people, family, friends, intimate partners. And at first, we didn't quite believe our own data because we understood that you might be happier if you had happier relationships, but how could relationships actually get into your body and change your physiology? But we've been finding, and other researchers have been finding, that it is the case that relationships help us weather the storms of life, they help us relieve stress, they get us through the hard times, they make us feel safer. And all of that lowers our stress levels and keeps the body systems healthier. People who are lonely, who are more isolated, have low levels of stress all the time. And those low levels of stress actually break down coronary arteries. They break down your joints. They make it more likely that you'll get type 2 diabetes. All of those things make a difference in how long we live and how healthy we are as we get older. So the book that we wrote, The Good Life, is about all the ways that relationships matter in our lives. The book tells the real life stories of the people in our study. The stories are disguised to protect everyone's privacy, but they're real stories. And um, they help to 
enliven and, and bring to life the findings of our study. And there's a lot of science in the book too. Not difficult to understand science, but we think pretty clearly explained information about how relationships help us as we go through life. So what we are doing now is studying how relationships are changing in life. We are still studying the second generation, the children of all of our original participants. Those children are all baby boomers. We are studying what life was like for them during the pandemic and what their relationships were like. We're studying how they use social media. And so we're still in touch with the people today who are in those families that we started with way back in 1938. I'm the fourth director of this study. The original founders of the study would never have dreamed that I'd be sitting here today telling you that our scientific work is still going on with these same families. 